Hey everyone, for this Adam Answers, I'm gonna go back to Facebook and somebody by the username, The Underachiever, has sent in a question, who's sent in a question before, so we're happy to have you back. So I'll read that question directly. It says, we have a lot of questions in SFBT that even though they are different, they follow the same goal. For example, the strength question, identity question, motivation question. I'm not sure if this terminology is correct in English, but all of these questions look for similar answers by asking what strength, what motivation, what characteristic did you have that helped you to do the thing and not to do other things? So why are they categorized separately and not together? So this is a really, really good question. And one of the things that I would um, begin my answer with is we're getting at the difference here between a technique and a conversation. And I think that the, the, your premise is exactly right. When we divide them up, when we say, okay, what strength do you use? And that's a strength question, or what is it about you? That's an identity question, or what helps you? Um, that's a motivation question. We can parse that apart at a technique level, but they do all kind of serve the same um, use. And in some sense, I would say when we put it onto the diamond, what we're really looking at and with a lot of these questions is resource, resource questions, resource conversation. So when we put it under that umbrella of resources for the outcome, then all of a sudden it doesn't really matter if we're asking about strengths or if we're asking about identity or we're asking about motivation. Because now we're looking, we're having a conversation that is about the presence of the desired outcome from a place of resources. Now, I want to give some additional clarification to this because I think there are some nuances with these different categories that you pointed out that are useful, maybe distinctions. With the strength question, what's the strength that you use or what's a quality that you have or something like that, that's a direct resource question. And what we're trying to get at with that kind of a question is we're trying to get the client to be able to acknowledge what their role or what their contribution is to the presence of the desired outcome. Because if they can take that accountability, if they can take that responsibility for the production of their desired outcome, what that then does is that it helps them to be able to say, well, if I can use that skill or that resource or that strength in this realm, I could also then use it again in a different realm or in a different way. And so, so with strength questions or characteristic questions, we really are getting at um, resources and helping the client to take accountability. When we go to the second kind of character or the classification that you highlighted, you talked about identity questions. What is it about you? Um, I would say it, with identity questions, we're getting at something slightly different, which is kind of those I've talked about before, three levels of difference. When we're getting a description of someone's desired outcome, we oftentimes want to go through three levels of difference. The first level of difference is what would you notice? What signs would be present that would let you know your desired outcome is present? What differences do you notice? <laughs> The second level is what difference do those differences make? So if you notice yourself smiling a bit more, what difference would that make to you? When we get at what difference it makes, um, in some sense, we're saying, what, what impact does it have? Why would that be useful? What, what difference are you making of the presence of those small signs or changes? <laughs> And then you can get to the third level of difference, which is what would it mean about you if those differences started to occur? And when you get to meaning, meaning making meaning about you, that's when we're getting to identity. That means I'm getting close to, well, it would mean that I was confident. It would mean that I was. And in some sense, what we're getting at is we're getting to a version of the person that is consistent with the presence of the desired outcome. And when we get to a version of someone or their identity, what we're really getting at is the, the identity of the person that is consistent with the presence of the desired outcome. And so it is still a resource oriented conversation that leads us there, but it also gets us really close to the transformation or the desired outcome that somebody is hoping to achieve. 
So even though they kind of seem similar on the surface, they really get at different things when we follow them through to the end. And getting at somebody's identity is a really, really valuable part of a conversation that's anchored in the desired outcome. And then the third distinction that you made was a motivation question. What motivation do you have that helps you to get to this? And this is where I would say there's a caution because when we get to what motivates you or what impacts you in that way or what would need to happen, we're getting to a place of potential problem solving where we say, what would need to take place or what would you need to feel or what would need to be different in order for you to start moving toward this desired outcome? And whenever we get to that that place of problem solving, I would say we're moving a little bit away from traditional solution focused therapy. And so we can ask what when you notice this difference, what impact does that have on you? Um, how, how does that make a difference for you? which does still get at something that motivates you, but it's slightly different because it's connected again to still to the description of the desired outcome. Whereas what what would need to happen borderlines on um, problem solving. So again, still connected to this like resource umbrella that we're talking about, but there's a caution in asking about motivation because it might lead to problem solving. Now that's not always the case. You can you can say back then when your desired outcome was present in a history conversation, what motivated you to to act in that way or what what was the impetus for you in doing what you did? Um, so you could still use it as description, but you want to be very careful not to go over into problem solving. So hopefully that helps. On the surface, it can be looked at as a technique, um, asking these different kinds of questions. But when we put it into description, they kind of all fit under resource descriptions, but they can really serve different purposes and get different kinds of details in a, de- in a desired outcome conversation. Um, so hopefully that is a useful conversation. I would love to hear your thoughts about that. If you have follow-up questions that I need to answer in order to kind of clarify a bit more, please send them my way. But hopefully that was a, a good opening description. <laughs>